My guest frequently gives prophetic words to world leaders and people like Kenneth Copeland and other leaders. He once prophesied that a man in grim financial condition would make $1 million in a year. That year, he earned $1,025. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. I've been so looking forward to interviewing Dean Sykes because, uh, you know, a man's gifts make room for him, Dean. Yeah. And uh, I've heard such wonderful things of your prophecies to people. As a matter of fact, what did God tell you was your call? To be a messenger. And, you know, messengers do two things. They receive messages, they deliver messages. And that's what I do. Tell me when you realized that you were really hearing from God and you had messages for people. I mean, did it start uh, really like this as a young child? You know, I, I heard his voice when I, was, when I was seven years old for the first time. I heard him call my name like he called Samuel. Mm -hmm. And then at 21, I had an encounter with God where I heard him again. But it wasn't until I was about 30 years old that I really began to hear God's voice for other people. And that began me on a journey of wherever I go, anywhere on the planet, God just begins to talk to me about people. And I just say what he says. Now, I, I, I understand that you deliver messages to people like Kenneth Copeland. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, yeah, I do want to put you on the spot. <laughs> right. Could you share the last message you gave to uh, Kenneth Copeland? Sure. You know, one of the messages that I most recently that, I, that I've shared with, with Brother Copeland is that there is a new political movement underway in the United States. There have been two major ones that God has really been involved with. There was the moral majority, right. the Christian coalition, mm -hmm. and now there's a third one underway in the earth and here in the United States where Christians, people who love God, come together and vote righteousness. You know, it's not necessarily a Republican or a Democratic. It's what's right in now, God's Now, why, why did you give this to Kenneth Cole? Because I believe the Lord spoke to me that he would be the person that would have great influence over this pe the people that would literally be in the leadership of this new grassroots organization. Well, speaking of government, yes. uh, there was a man that was a, a, a senator running for governor. Right. Uh, tell me about him. Interesting story there. I, I was, there's a guy that's in the United States Congress, and mm -hmm. he was running for governor of a state. And the Lord spoke to me and said, he's my person to be in, in the governor's office and I've got a message for him and you're going to need to get it to him. And I said, well, Lord, I mean, he and I know each other from a distance, but we don't have communication. You're going to have to set this up. Well, he did. And about four or five nights later, my phone rang late one night and it was this congressman saying, I hear you've heard from God from me. And I began to share with him what the Lord had told me. And it went from the throne of God to me, to the congressman to a gubernatorial debate, I was hearing well, across the airwaves what God had spoken to me in the privacy of my prayer. Mm. But, well, it, there was a point in your life where, sure, you heard the audible voice of God call your name as a young child, mm. but there was a point where it became a gusher. Yeah. Tell me about that. 21 years old and working in real estate development, had whatever society says makes you successful couple airplanes at our disposal, a condo in South in Florida, things. The things had me. I didn't have them. That's a troublesome place to be mm -hmm. in life. And I grew up in church, went to, went to schools that, that, you know, were Christian-based schools. And at 21, I said, God, I don't think you're real. I don't think you hear me. I feel pretty stupid even talking to somebody that I don't think exists. But if by chance I'm wrong, if you really are real, if you've got a plan for my life, would you please just prove to me that you're real? Don't ever under any circumstance ask God to prove to you that he's real <laughs> unless you're ready for an encounter of the first kind. Two weeks go by, I'm sitting in my office, not bothering anybody, nice office, mm -hmm. dialing a phone, not bothering anybody. And off behind me to my left, I hear this voice. And it was a commanding voice with two words, call mom, call mom. Hmm. I didn't say what if. I dialed three, four, four, seven, four, four, three. The phone rang seven times. On the eighth ring, my mother answered the telephone. And when she said hello, I instantaneously knew something was horrifically wrong. Her voice was slurred. She was disoriented. I was about to learn that in the moment of time when God, by his spirit, said to me, call mom, and I obeyed, my mother 
was attempting suicide. If you had not obeyed... She would have died. You're sure? I know it. Okay. There's what, no doubt. What Med- med- the, the medical side of her life proves that out, that she would have died. I ran out of my office, got into my car, drove up Interstate 75 to a little community called Udawa, Tennessee. And as I drove into my parents' neighborhood from the outside in, their home was fine, safe, secure, probably like where you all live. But from the inside out, my mom was dying. I said a very simple prayer. It would not have been studied. It would not have, you know, gotten the attention of a lot of religious people. But it was in my way saying, hey, God, I can't save her, but you can. Please do what only you can do. I banged on the door. My mom came down some stairs. She fell into my arms. I picked her up. I carried her to her car, drove her back down the interstate. And that day, God saved my mom's life and said to my dad a sentence I will never forget. He said, Mr. Sykes, there's no medical reason to share this with you. It's a, quote, miracle of God. Your wife is alive. She made it. You can go see her. And since that day, Sid, she left the hospital. She went back to school, became a Christian doctor herself, and today helps people in a counseling ministry that she's got come through what she came through. But it really became a gusher when you were speaking for a teen group one night. Tell oh, me yeah. about that. You know, that was a, I do a lot with teenagers. I, I love reaching out to young people. And I was in Charleston, South Carolina, pretty large youth group. And when I was speaking that night, I began to hear the Holy Spirit say, there are multiple people here who think death is better than life. Maybe like someone in the audience right now, maybe you think death is better than life. When God made you, he didn't go, oops, I made a mistake. He put his stamp of approval on you. And when I was in Charleston ministering that night and the Spirit of God talked to me about suicide and I gave an altar call, you know, an invitation, if you will. You know, if you're dealing with this, do you have the courage to raise your hand? I was astonished at the number of people whose hands shot up across that auditorium. They took us to a room by ourselves and said there was one young man, I don't don't think I'll ever forget him. He looked at me with tears coming down his eyes and he says, Dean, at home right now, the shotgun is loaded, the note is written, but because You heard that I was in trouble. God said to you, there are those here who are going to die tonight. If you're dealing with suicide, make a decision. He said, because I heard those words, I'm choosing to live. And you know what? What? He lived. He did not die. Put the gun away, tore the note up, doing great today. So you realized you were hearing from God very, very clearly. Yes, sir. But what happens when you're in another country, Australia, (laughs) and you have lost everything, you got into really deep debt, and I imagine some of you can relate. What do you do? God showed Dean supernaturally how to get out of debt. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! It was God's purpose from the beginning for all nations to become one in Yeshua, Messiah Jesus to break down the middle wall of separation between Jew and Gentile. When Jewish spiritual DNA merges with the New Covenant Christian DNA, there will be what Paul called life from the dead. That's why Sid Roth's website is loaded with cutting edge articles and teaching about the one new man. Log on to SidRoth.org today. We now return to It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here with Dean Sykes. What happens if you're in another country, Australia, and you're in debt, and you have no way of getting out, but God showed Dean how to get out? Tell me about that. You know, I'd gotten to Australia on a Tuesday, was there for like 11 days, and I had Saturday afternoon off. I was sitting in a little bitty home at the end of a little bitty street in a small city in South Australia. And I was thinking about, Lord, how did I get into this mess? And he spoke to me, he says, I'm going to show you a key today that will change the rest of your life. And he took me to 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. And that petitions word leaped off the page. I said, what is a petition? And the Lord spoke to me, he said, it's a legal binding document between you and me. It's my word on the line here. And I'm going to show you how to take my word and change your world. And he did. And for the next four hours, I wrote my very first petition based on Romans 13, 8, to know, oh, oh, no man anything but to love. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. And the Lord said, here's how you do this. You write this petition. You confess it out loud. You continue your tithing, your giving to your local church. And then you sow your seed into other ministries and people that I show you to. And those three steps, tithing, giving, speaking, God's word, totally radically changed our life. 
Well, what happened to the debt situation? It went away. How long did it take? 18 months. How long did it take you to get Ten into years. debt? 10 years. 10 years. But this isn't just for money, oh, no. from what God told you. No. What does it cover? It, it covers every aspect of your life. Our son would not sleep in his own bed when he was much younger. None of us were getting a good night's sleep. And I went to the Lord about it. He says, well, write a petition. I said, you're kidding. He said, no, go to the Word. And in, in Proverbs, it says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. That was the foundational verse for my petition for my son to sleep in his own bed. I wrote a petition. We did what the Lord told us. Our little boy has slept in his bed every night since. Okay. Uh, at the time you got out of debt, yeah. uh, your wife throws a curve at you. She, she wants her dream house, she, but uh, she doesn't understand the facts of life. I mean, when you uh, are in such a bad debt situation, your credit will not allow you to buy your dream house. Don't you understand that? Isn't that what you told her? I tried to, <laughs> but you know what? Her, her faith canceled my fact. Okay. You know, and as a result, she called me one day. I was on the road somewhere ministering. She says, I found the house. I said, honey, we have a house. She says, no, I found the house. And sure enough, we went, we looked at this house. And when we drove into the neighborhood and into our driveway, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, it's your house. I said, Lord, but the debt, the, the bad credit, the, the bad choices. He said, if you keep talking this way, you will talk yourself out of what I'm doing my best to give you. Well, there's a verse in the Bible that says, even a fool when silence considered wise. So I just shut up. <laughs> and I went and I wrote that petition. And guess what? What? We put a for sale by owner sign in our home where we were living on a Friday afternoon at 530. The following Monday at 630, the house sold. 72 hours. Mm. I said, Lord, this better be you because I just sold the house. He said, you didn't sell anything. Your petition, my word, sold the house. Get ready to move. Well, you know, as wonderful as... The, what God showed him, this tool of how to implement God's word through petition. What is the number one thing people are asking you as you travel throughout the world? Why am I here? What's my vision? Why did God put me on the earth? A lot of people just don't know. Maybe today you don't know. Maybe you're seriously wondering, why am I here? Why did life not turn out the way I, like I thought it was going to? And the Lord showed me the answer. It's the third verse in the Bible. God said, let there be light. And there was light. He translated as she says, then God said, light be and light was. Well, what does God say about, about light in, in the word? Light dispels darkness, but it enables vision. Well, what do you say about vision? Without a vision, people perish. Could God be saying today, wherever you are on the planet, vision be? See, our vision is not ours to decide. It's ours to discover. And when we discover God's destiny for our life and we apply the, the, the principle of petitioning God to see that petition come into life and that destiny come to life, we win. Tell me about that man that heard your teaching on destiny. As you're, you're hearing Dean right now, and uh, this man had a big problem. He was grossly overweight, 350 pounds. Tell me about him, Dean. One of the, one of the most enjoyable testimonies I can share with you. Th this young man had a dream, and he discovered that his destiny was to be a pilot. And, and he, was, he was overweight. And with all due respect to him, at that point in his life, he literally could not fit in the cockpit of the airplane. Mm. But he said, this is my destiny. Then God has shown it to me. He's revealed it to me. And you know what? What? Within 18 months, again, there's a the number 18, 18 months, that young man went from that amount of weight all the way down to 180 some odd pounds and literally began the process of becoming a pilot. All because he caught the revelation of what God had called him to do. He saw the plan of God on how to get there. Was it some work involved? Yeah, there is work involved but it's absolutely a matter of our believing what God says is possible. Okay, tell me about someone that you know that was in dire financial straits mm -hmm. and he used the power of petition. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's a man that I could tell you about right now that when I met him, he was in debt. He couldn't sleep. He, he was on sleeping pills. His marriage was in trouble. And the Lord spoke to me that he's a king of finance in my kingdom. I said, what does that mean? He said, there's three kinds of people. There's kings, there's priests, there's armor bearers. Kings create wealth. Priests do what we do, minister. Armor bearers help support. He said, this man is a king of finance. Go, go minister to him. Teach him what I've taught you. And I sat down with him. I said, you know, you're, you're a king of finance. He said, what does that mean? I said, you're called to give, to, to bring provision for vision. He said, I love to give. I said, I know. He said, I don't have anything to give, though. I said, oh, wait, God gives seed to the sower. I said, if you'll let me teach you what I've been taught, and as we began the process, about two or three months into the process, the Lord said to me, this year, I'm going to prove myself strong to him. He'll make a million dollars. 
Now, that's that's putting your prophetic gift on the line. Well, this, he, you put a time limit oh, yeah. this year. Yes, and he was broke when I yeah, made it. Do you put time limits sometimes on, on when, gifts? Oh, when the Lord tells me a specific mm -hmm. time, yes, sir, absolutely. Okay. And All because right. then you you know you know them by the fruit. So what happened to him? He made a million twenty-five that year. A million twenty-five. Because God's a God of increase. He'll always do a oh. little bit more. I love that. But, but uh, God showed you you needed an airplane. He did. You know, I was driving home from Florida one day, and I was, I was having a pity party. And God rarely shows up at those things, but for whatever reason, he showed up at that one today. And I, and I said, Lord, I'm so tired. I've been driving all these miles, and an airplane shot across the sky. He says, why don't you have an airplane? I said, That's, why don't I have an airplane? He said, you've not given me anything to work with. Remember, in my I'll tell work. you what, hold that thought. Let's okay. find out what happened to that airplane. I know you're not going to go away. I'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! Before the world was ever formed, God created you for a specific purpose that nobody else in the world could accomplish. Dean Sykes, a proven prophet, shared with millions worldwide how to discover their God-given destiny and help them begin supernaturally walking in it. Call now and receive two powerful, life-changing audio CD teachings by Dean Sykes. Discover your destiny and the power of petition. Yours for a donation of $22. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9078. Through this anointed teaching, learn an easy-to-understand step-by-step process that has never fail to identify a person's God-given destiny. You will learn you're never too old to discover your destiny. God will redeem the time the enemy has stolen so you can fulfill your destiny. In his second message, The Power of Petition, Dean teaches you supernatural keys to help you get every one of your prayers answered. Step by step, learn how to create your own petition to God. Receive answers to prayers for every area of your life, including finances, health, relationships, mental and physical disorders, addictions, and so much more. A bankrupted businessman grabbed hold of Dean's teaching and wound up a millionaire. Don't miss out on getting these two powerful, life-changing audio CD teachings by Dean Sykes. Discover your destiny and the power of petition. Yours for a donation of $22. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9078. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9078 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural! Hello, Sid Roth here with Dean Sykes. And Dean realizes to accomplish everything he's supposed to, he needs an airplane. He specifically petitions for a specific airplane based on the promises of God. And how many months later did you get your exact airplane? Ten months. Now. After you got that exact airplane, I imagine you were not a happy camper in, uh, what was that, 2006 in October. Uh, you're flying along, and what happens? I had just ministered in Pennsylvania. I was heading to Kentucky to do an event. And as I was flying, I was in the back of the airplane. It was about 9.30 at night, just a pilot up front, me in the back. I was just not bothering anybody. And we heard a noise, and the plane kind of stuttered in flight. A very uncomfortable moment for me. I'm sure. Within seconds, we realized the right engine had, we had just experienced catastrophic engine failure. The right engine quit. So what do you do in an emergency situation like that? You, you can't be prepared. No, well, you can, you can only be prepared to the point of the Word of God's inside of you. I've been confessing for months prior to this what the Word of God said about my safety. Okay. And so I immediately realized we were in serious danger. We were three miles up. We had one engine, unfamiliar territory, surrounded by mountains, and we're going to get one shot at our landing. Hmm. And I began to literally just pray that the promises of God that I've been believing God would literally keep us alive that night. I stood on the Word. I, I learned a great lesson. When you enter into an unexpected moment and you need a miracle, that's not the time to start planting seeds. Hmm. That's the time to start calling in harvest. Everything in God's kingdom is seed, time, and harvest. And when, when you go through something like this, you realize that the Word really works. You, your, your faith is really tested, and you see, you measure where you really are in life. We landed safely after that night, got off the airplane, called my wife, called a few other people. Ten days later, coming out of Chicago, I had leased an airplane. On takeoff, we lost the left engine at 6,000 feet. Uh, let, let me get this straight. Uh, Ten days previous, you lose the right engine in one airplane. And, and you should have died. 
-hmm. 10 days later, you, you lose the left in. You must have a, an engine demon that must have been followed. One of the lessons I learned there was when you go through something, you better know the origin of what you're experiencing. Okay, 10 days later, the, the engine goes out again. Yeah. Uh, what was your first thought? Oh, no. The pilot and I looked at each other, and we both, it sounded like someone had turned marbles into the engine, and they were crunching through the mm -hmm. engine. And as we're flying along, the airplane is now dropping altitude. The pilot's giving it all the power it has left. The airplane's trying to turn over because the left engine is a critical engine. There's fog all over the area. We were in Chicago in October, so you know what that's like. Well, as I'm in the back of the airplane praying, the Holy Spirit says to me, Gary, Indiana, very directly, very firmly. I didn't blink an eye. I told our pilot, I said, find out where Gary, Indiana is. We were about eight minutes away. Did you have any idea you were so close? I had no idea. I had no, but God does. He always knows where you are. Okay, you're told where to land. You probably have that same problem again. One chance or you're yep. done. Yep. And we're coming in and it's as if, the best way I can explain this, it's as if God kind of leaned out over heaven and blew a breath of air and suddenly there was no fog, and the runway's right in front of us, and there's no problem here. The, the pilot drops the landing gear, we're coming in. It's a little more nervous this time, but interestingly, my cell phone rings at this, at this altitude, and it's one of my best friends, and I said, it's happened again, pray, and I hung up on him. <laughs> and we landed the airplane, and I got off the airplane, and you know what I did? What? I cried. I can understand. I did, and I said, you know what, God? I can't do this anymore. And maybe right now you are feeling like you can't do this anymore. But I'm here to tell you that God will never leave you or forsake you. And he met me right where I was in that airplane, standing on that tarmac. I can, I can see myself right now. And his love just enveloped me. He says, it's okay. I got you covered. Today, you fly all over the place. Yeah. Uh, have you seen God protect you again oh, and again? Tell me another, well, tell me it's something that you, that you might see as far as angelic protection. You know what's interesting about that one? We can be flying along, especially on a, on a beautiful day, and I can literally look up my right window and I can see the reflection of our airplane in the sky when the sun hits it a certain mm -hmm. way, and there is a circle of light that we are flying inside of. I'm mm -hmm. fully convinced it's the glory of God and he's protecting us. I've seen him on radar on our airplane. I've seen him move clouds out of our way, thunderstorms out of our way, just enough to let us scoot behind them and keep going instead of going through them. I want you to encourage someone. Absolutely. There is a destiny on their life. There is. You? Yes, let, let me just share with you the truth that God has never made a mistake and he's not gonna start with you. God has a purpose for your life. He's got a plan for your life. No matter where you are on this planet, God's for you. And if he can be for you, who can be against you? Who cares who's against you? Irrespective of what you're doing in your world, irrespective of where you are, no matter what you've gone through at this point, to this point, just don't give up. God's got a plan for your life. And, and in the, these last few minutes, I'm going to draw hmm. on your prophetic gift. What are you seeing for either me yeah. or someone that's watching right now? For you right now, I see angels all around you. I see the hand of God directing your steps. I see promotion that comes from the north. I see people literally lining up, wanting desperately to get into your life for access. But God, by his spirit, will give you great wisdom on who gets in and who doesn't get in. God, by his spirit, will lead you into and out of relationships that will, that will design to take you to the place, the ultimate fulfillment of the calling on your life. There are multiple years ahead of you. I've told you privately that the, the, the anointing that was on Hezekiah's life, the 15 years is there on your life. God has given it to you. For someone watching right now, I'm telling you, for those, that person right now, and you're in a foreign country, you're not in the United States, and you're wondering, does God even exist where you are? I'm telling you in the next 72, 73 hours, between right now when you're watching this, go forward 73 hours, in this time span, God by his spirit is going to show up in your life in such a dramatic way that you'll know that he's real and you'll never question the reality of God again. Well, there's such a peace that's here right now. Do you feel that? Oh, yeah. it's, it's, do you yeah. feel that peace? It's, it's settling in. I believe it's settling in in your home. I believe that God is healing people right Amen. now, Dean. Yes. Uh, I, I believe the pains of all kinds yes. are being taken away from you right now. And what I have found, I don't quite understand it, 
But when a word is spoken, as it is right now, if you'll do something, like if you have pain in your fingers, move your fingers. If you have pain in your neck, move your head. If you have pain in your back, it's very strong on backs right now, mm -hmm. just bend over. Pain in your hip, do the hip hop. Oh, no, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Uh, what else do you see, Dan? You know what? The other thing I see is I see a teenager right now who just happened, you think, to come across this channel. You didn't just happen to. Maybe you're on the Internet right now, wherever you are. And God, just like he spoke to me audibly when I was 21 years old, he's going to speak to you audibly. Don't ignore it because when God speaks, it's undeniable. But he's going to give you, and it's a young lady, by the way, and you're 17 years old. He's going to give you a very specific, seemingly simple instruction. The most important thing you'll ever do is hear God. The second most important thing you'll ever do is obey what you just heard. And even more important than that is you can't begin to really do what God has for you, accomplish your destiny, unless you know God. Uh, the issue isn't to say a little prayer. The issue is to know him. This is eternal life that you might know him. You start by saying a prayer. You start by telling God you're sorry for your sins. That's the doorway in. But there is so much more eye has not seen and ear has not heard. All that God has in store for you. This is your moment. Choose life. He has a name. Yeshua in Hebrew. Jesus in English. Tell God you're sorry. Leave the blood of Yeshua. Washes away your sins. Make him your Lord now. Before the world was ever formed, God created you for a specific purpose that nobody else in the world could accomplish. Dean Sykes, a proven prophet, shared with millions worldwide how to discover their God-given destiny and help them begin supernaturally walking in it. Call now and receive two powerful, life-changing audio CD teachings by Dean Sykes. Discover your destiny and the power of petition. Yours for a donation of $22. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9078. Through this anointed teaching, learn an easy-to-understand step-by-step process that has never fail to identify a person's God-given destiny. You will learn you're never too old to discover your destiny. God will redeem the time the enemy has stolen so you can fulfill your destiny. In his second message, The Power of Petition, Dean teaches you supernatural keys to help you get every one of your prayers answered. Step by step, learn how to create your own petition to God. Receive answers to prayers for every area of your life, including finances, health, relationships, mental and physical disorders, addictions, and so much more. A bankrupted businessman grabbed hold of Dean's teaching and wound up a millionaire. Don't miss out on getting these two powerful life-changing audio CD teachings by Dean Sykes. Discover your destiny and the power of petition. Yours for a donation of $22. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9078. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 9078 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Did you know that you have a gift within you that is totally unique? I mean, no one on earth has that same gift. My guest will help you discover your supernatural gift that can change the world on this edition of It's Supernatural.